Hello, prospective students. Welcome to the McCourt School Facebook Live event. And we're here excited to tell you about the McCourt School and life at Georgetown. And we're ready to answer any questions for you about McCourt and our program. So feel free to go on Facebook and punch in some questions there. Um, let's start with introductions. I'll start with me. My name is Hall Wayne. I'm a first year Master's of Public Policy student. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I went to Wake Forest University. At uh, McCourt School, I was the chair of the Public Policy Conference, and I'm on the Honor Council for Georgetown University. Uh, hi, my name is Emily Schmidlin. I am also a first year Master of Public Policy student graduating class of 2018. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I got my undergraduate degree from the University of Pittsburgh in economics and political science. Hi, my, my name is Julian Colombo. Uh, I'm an MBM student. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I got my degree in political science in the Catholic University of Buenos Aires. Uh, besides uh, student and the courses, I'm taking part of one of the student strategy teams in geopolitics and also in the McCord Policy and Practice program. Hi, my name is Jessica. Um, I'm a first year international development policy student. I'm from Boston. And I went to undergrad at Boston University where I studied broadcast journalism and international relations. Um, here at McCourt, I'm in the Georgetown Public Policy Review, and I also started a food policy and health policy student group um, <coughs> called Food and Health Research at McCourt. So one thing uh, prospective students are frequently interested about is why we, did we choose McCourt? And we like giving a sample of that. Me personally, I looked at 18 different schools before I chose McCourt, and I have two sisters that went to public policy programs, not here at Georgetown. So I knew I was getting myself into it. And ultimately, I was looking for more than just a school. I was looking for a team to have a fam to have teammates with. And they're essentially like my second family. And I came to Georgetown and saw a lot, a lot of that. And now that I'm here, I really do appreciate it. You're just, a lot of my classmates are great people. It's a very ego-free environment. And everyone's willing to help out, collaborate, and just get things done together. I really appreciate that about that about Georgetown, in addition to the academic benefits, so on and so forth. Actually, when I d was deciding what schools I wanted to go or even to apply to, I looked at five different schools, but I only ended up applying to four, which is very different from everybody <coughs> else who I've met here at McCourt. They all applied to a lot of schools, but I knew I wanted to be in D.C. mostly for the opportunities that being in the center of public policy would afford. I'd originally looked at Duke, and then I realized, why would I go to a school that's in the, not really in the middle of any sort of policy making? Um, and when I actually was here visiting for Admitted Students Day, I had planned to go visit other schools, and after visiting Georgetown first, I kind of automatically knew just from walking around the campus and talking to people that this is where I wanted to be. And so just seeing all of the things that I'd get to do just because I was at Georgetown, a possible um, employer for an internship next mm -hmm. semester is actually also going to be a teacher here. So I'll get to see her on campus, and possibly off campus as well. So it's things like that that drove me to come here. Well, I just McCord School for similar reasons. I have worked some years in politics in Argentina, so I really want to be in the center of, of the political arena in the in the U.S., especially during an election year. So when I moved here, I discovered that uh, Washington had so many things to offer. There are several uh, speakers and events that are held in Georgetown. Um, besides, all the professors here at McCord have a uh, broad experience both on the nonprofit sector uh, or politics or also in businesses. So this, uh, this mix, uh, along with different students from all over the world, uh, are the perfect combination for me trying to develop uh, uh, a career in management and, and politics. Uh, well, I had been living in D.C. for about three and a half years before coming to school, um, and I, I knew that Georgetown had a basically a mafia in the city um, <laughs> and that people know the name of the school and it's super well connected in the international development community. Um, the other part of it is that I wanted to go back to school to get uh, quantitative skills. It's never been a strong suit of mine um, and it seemed appealing to be in a program that was really small. Um, the MITP program is usually only about 20 or so people um, and I wanted that small environment where I could feel like um, I'm getting personal <coughs> attention to learn topics that, uh, um, that are not usually uh, my best. Um, and so far, it's been a really great experience. So one of the things people look for in a graduate school is internships and professional experiences. I think we should share some of our internships and professional experiences uh, since we entered McCourt School. Myself, I worked at the Center for Education in the Workforce. 
at Georgetown, and it's been a great fun. I frequently am communicating with members of Congress and their staff, understanding the latest in education policy, discussed with other think tanks, and written, uh, written some documents and blog posts to m message our interests in our website, and so on and so forth. That's experience that probably would be a little bit more difficult to get had it not been in Georgetown in the heart of DC. So I actually work on campus at the um, Office of Research Services, uh, which is incredibly helpful in the fact that I've become a lot more acquainted with the grants process. And so one of the things I personally want to do is I eventually do want to do research down the line. So getting some familiarity with that um, is really helpful. And that's not a thing that a lot of schools have centralized that students are allowed to participate in. That's pretty much they have just a staff that comes here just to do that. Um, so getting that kind of experience and just getting some sort of um, just some experience, just some experience with that um, has been incredibly helpful, and I know it will be in the future. Yeah, well, I'm also working on on campus at a graduate assistant at McGurt School. Uh, sometimes it's difficult; it's more difficult for international students to to apply for internships due to the visa processes, but. That's w <coughs> other, the other advan advantage of Georgetown, uh, being located in the city center of Washington, D.C. It's so easy to, uh, to reach some people or, or to reach different things to do, even though when you can work uh, uh, by the law. Uh, but it's, it's very, there's a very wide variety of things you can do. And I'm very happy to be working on, on campus and at McGurt specifically because I get to know more of the professors, the staff, the students, and it's, it's been a very, a very rich experience. Um, I think the MIDP courses are a little different. Um, I think given the intensity of the courses in the first semester, I know that most of my um, classmates in my program aren't working. Um, we, a few of us do things on the side. I freelance for my old company, um, but none of us are, are um, in heavy internships, and that probably won't start until next year. Um, although some more people are probably interning next semester, but the bulk of us uh, really won't start our internships um, until uh, second year. And also a lot of people get their internships from the um, kind of summer, the summer internships that, um, I don't want to call it a placement, but they help us along with the summer field internships. And from that, um, we get a lot of our fall internships in the second year. I just want to add something to just com kind of comment on what you said. Um, one of the nice things about working on campus, if you do think you have a very intense schedule, you're still trying to get back in the swing of school, and so you don't think you can work a ton, one of the nice things about just being on campus is the fact that they know that you are a student first before you are an employee of Georgetown. So they won't allow you to work more than 20 hours a week if you, like, you, you're employed through Georgetown. Um, so they can kind of control the fact that, okay, yeah, I still want to work, but I also don't want to give myself more than I think I can handle. So that's a really nice option for you if you think that might be a problem. So before we move on to the next question, I just want to remind you to please send us questions on Facebook. We'll be happy to answer any and everything. Feel free to ask what your heart's desire, and <laughs> we'll try to help you out as much as we can. Um, but going forward, um, now, one thing about grad school, you get lots of cool experiences. I think we should all discuss what, are, what some of the coolest experiences have been while I've been at McCor. And for me, just approaching from an academic perspective, one of the reasons I chose Georgetown over some other programs is because this is in a large university with lots of components, and it's not just the public policy school, it's other pr programs, SFS, uh, the Foreign Service School, MBA, other departments. And I, I've been collaborating on a project with the, the history department, Spanish department, while also with the MBA school. That's in just getting seeing lots of academic sides of looking at a certain problem. That's a very interesting and I find very cool experience for me. And that's something I really like about Georgetown, especially how um, very fully willing and happy any department is willing to help any Georgetown student regardless of where they come from. And that's something I come to really appreciate um, to be academically inquisitive. Uh, one of my cool, I don't know, it's more of like a collective experience has been the fact that there's always something going on at Georgetown for you to kind of go do. Um, there's constantly a speaker here talking about a variety of different things, no matter what you're interested in, you can always find something every, every week that you want to go to, whether it's <coughs> Senator Kerry uh, coming to talk about climate change or uh, Vice President Biden who's been here. 
Uh, they also have uh, a Veterans Day event, which was absolutely wonderful, um, where they brought someone in um, from the Veterans Administration to talk. Um, there's constantly something for you to go see and to constantly be engaged in the Georgetown community is a really <coughs> wonderful thing where you never kind of feel like you're just an outsider coming in for classes and that's pretty much it. Well, I have had some very cool experiences. I, I want to highlight, to highlight two. Uh, the first one, uh, two weeks ago, I've been in the Dominican Republic with a team of, uh, of students uh, in the McCourt of uh, Policy and Practice program. And this is a very good experience because we try to, to apply the, the knowledge and the, the technical skills we learn at school really in the field and helping to develop some some very good programs uh, in e education and health in in different countries. Um, the second one, I've always involved in, in politics. Uh, last year I was working uh, with the Buenos Aires province governor who ran for president and uh, I had the I, I was very lucky here to to get into the Martin O'Malley uh, team in geopolitics. Uh, he was the former, as the former governor, governor of Maryland, uh, former candi presidential candidate. Uh, his ex experience was very good for me to try to compare how politics are made uh, between Argentina and the, and the U.S., uh, their differences and similarities, and that combined to the classes uh, was a very cool mix. Um, I think people have touched upon a lot of things. Uh, definitely there's a ton of things for you to do. Um, you get emails constantly um, and Facebook invites. And um, if you can, I mean, if you could, you could do it all. Um, and there's, um, I think the, also the other thing is um, that I've really enjoyed is that the school feels small in a really good way. Um, one of the reasons I, when I was choosing schools, also, um, you know, I was deciding between Columbia and it's such a large school there. And um, I think McCourt has been really nice because it's been pretty small and intimate, and people are super supportive. Also, um, at least in the MIDP program, half of the class is international, and I think it's brought some interesting perspectives into the classroom um, when we talk about issues. Okay. So we have our uh, first Facebook question from Laura Wilson. And she asks, can we talk about the breadth of the elective offerings? And I'll just start from a Georgetown University-wide perspective in that you have class offerings, not only for elective offerings, not only from this school, but from all these schools on main campus of Georgetown. So that's MBA, MBA classes, School of Foreign Service, um, Culture, Communication, Technology program, lots of programs here you could take in addition with two months of court. And there's a lot already in the court that we can talk about um oh so the breadth um i think there's only 14 of first year students who are interested in environmental policy um, which i was kind of surprised about it seems like a up and coming topic um, but when i was looking through the electives that they had already sent out to us um, before we even started when we were thinking about what classes we were going to want to take while we were here there was you get six electives um, that you get to take throughout your two years um, there was already more than six that were directly related to environmental <laughs> policy, and I was so excited about the fact that I was worried that I was going to have to take ones that I wasn't really all that interested in, but no matter what, there's always an elective for you to want to take, whether you know what kind of policy you want to go into, but they do have other electives that are just things kind of like data visualization and skills that you can apply to any policy area you choose to go in, but then they do have those ones that are directly health policy, education policy, environmental, um, or anything that you might want to, whether you know what you want to do with it or not. Yeah, that, that's one of the things I found more interesting in Georgetown. Uh, in the MPM program, you can do waiver exams on some core classes, so I've done as much as, much as, as I can, so I'm taking a lot of elective courses and there has been so good so far and it's very difficult to choose how or which course elect because there are a wide variety and so many good courses and it's very hard to, to, to try to, to find the right one for you because all of them are very good and also the number of, uh, of students on each class is very good because you don't have like classes on or of 100 students so the classes are very small very personalized and you have the possibility on on each class to have a a very a very good discussion between the professor and the students from classes for from for five students to 20 students it's that's a very good experience to make all right we have a new question from Mackenzie 
and she uh, and the question is who are some of your most memorable professors and wh what kind of experience have they brought to the classroom um, well actually one of the reasons I chose Georgetown is because of a professor uh, so Frank Weeby, um, who's also the faculty director of the MITP program, we met over the summer before I started my applications. We had a two-hour conversation all about my fears and doubts, um, and it was almost like a therapy session. Um, and it's been great. Uh, so Frank um, has been available um, you know, throughout the whole semester. And I've also had um, other professors in the program um, who are always there and willing to talk to you and I think that's probably the key aspect which I really enjoyed is that <coughs> the access to them um, and how available they are um, and how much they support you through the whole process. Yeah and also if you, if you are interested for example in economics you can take classes with a Nobel Prize winner, you have the uh, former uh, congressman, staffers, you have very, a very good uh, uh, variety of professors to choose and they're very they're very good actually and with a lot of experience not only academic but they were on the field all of them and that's that's a very good uh, things it's really ooh, oh, um, we, we have a new question from uh, Jesse uh, with your court the question is with your work course load and everything you're involved in how do you find work-life balance so I, I'll take <laughs> that hey a lot of it is just time management and it's very doable and you are as busy as you make yourself out, mm -hmm. out to be. Um, one of the important things is knowing what you can do and based off of that, scheduling a little bit more cushion time for that. And I think uh, myself, all my classmates, we're all really busy, but I think we're, social, we're all pretty social at the school and we make a big effort to make time for social time and time to take care of ourselves, it's going to the gym, so on and so forth. As one of the things I'd want to caution people is to don't hold yourself back because you're worried that you might end up kind of feeling the heat from what you're doing. Um, one of the things that I was worried about whenever I was coming in was the fact that um, I had never <coughs> done anything advanced. I came directly out of undergrad, unlike most of the people that are in this program, they usually have work experience. So I was a little worried that I wouldn't be able to keep up with some of the stuff that was going on. And so when we got the choice or the chance to take some of the waiver exams, even though with my background I could have taken all three for the core classes, I chose not to because I was kind of worried that if I did and I started moving on to the more advanced classes that I wouldn't be able to handle it and so then something I would either fail or something else would happen. But as I got into the classes that I, re I realized that I was holding myself back and so that's one of my biggest regrets coming in that I would want everyone to take advantage of all the opportunities because then you do get to take more electives. Um, as you said, that you get to take a wider variety of the things that you are really interested in that you aren't already just to kind of taking a refresher course to take an easy A or to like save yourself some time, actually take advantage of everything. Julian, um, this good, good question for you. Um, it's a question from Gabby. How are the classes structured? Are they lecture based or are they more of a seminar style where everyone participates in the dialogue? Well, for example, uh, I've taken classes uh, only with the MPM students and with the MPM, MPP and MIDP students and all of them have been seminar. Uh, the professors are looking to to encourage the students to, to push themselves to, to be better every day. So the feedback between the professors and the students are the really important thing. Uh, I think if you only have lecture classes, it's, it's a thing you can do by yourself in your living room reading a book. And the interesting thing is is to, to get in, into political, academic, uh, or policy discussion with the professors. So uh, the seminar structured classes are, um, are have been very good. I think for the core courses, there's definitely an element where it's lecture because you just need to learn stats and, and the basics of econ. But what I think um, is different is that um, professors bring in real life experiences and topics which go into debate. <coughs> and it's not like you, you can't speak or um, if you're interested in um, I don't know, if you're talking about randomized control trials and there's something you read that you found interesting, you can't bring it up. Um, and also the MIDP program, there's only 20 of us uh, and we go through all of the classes together, so it's quite small. Um, so in that way, I think it is uh, kind of a seminar style, even though we might be learning topics that traditionally are taught in lectures. So this is a very interesting question from Libby. 
And what are schools did he apply to? And why did he choose McCourt? Uh, I'll start off with a fun one. Um, I originally wanted to follow my sister, my oldest sister, to the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. <coughs> and the reason why I didn't go there is, honestly, believe it or not, Cambridge is more expensive than DC. And granted, Harvard's a great school, great program. It's also, believe it or not, at least compared to what my conversation with my sister are, it's been relatively much easier for me to get internships and access here in DC. So between that and just how McCourt has great environment, for me it was a pretty easy decision. So since I only applied to four schools, it's actually very easy for me to tell you which ones I applied to rather than Hall, who did 18. Um, so I applied to Georgetown, American, George Washington, and George Mason. Um, Georgetown was actually kind of my reach school whenever I was applying because I had applied for undergrad, didn't end up coming here, and so when I applied I was really thinking like, the, like it, is, it is my dream school. Um, just as you walk around, you can kind of, you can feel the history and you can just kind of see all of the work that's been put into this school over the centuries. Um, so that's always really awesome. What else is in here? Yeah, oh, and so why did I choose McCourt? Um, it's just the professors here, you can tell just based on who they bring in to teach, who are visiting professors or um, <coughs> just kind of someone brought in to teach an elective. My elective professor this year was the former chairperson of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and my class is on nuclear policy. I mean, you, you can't really get much more experience than that. So it's the kind of things like that, um, not only the access to the rest of DC through Georgetown because the network is so large, um, but then also just the kind of things you actually get directly in the classroom that brought me here. Yeah, I also applied to Harvard, to Columbia School in New York, and to Georgetown. And for me, the choice was about Georgetown prestige and location, location and location. Um, it was because being more interested in politics than in academy, for me, be the, its DC-based location was uh, one very important thing to consider when choosing my college. Um, so I applied to Georgetown, Johns Hopkins, Princeton, Harvard, and Columbia, I think. Yes, those are the <laughs> schools. It's been a while now. Um, and I chose McCourt um, because I think the offerings uh, were what I wanted, the class size were aligned to what I wanted, and um, I could say honestly, I was also able to negotiate with them on money, <laughs> and that was really helpful in my decision as well. Okay. Just some notes about applying, looking at the schools. Is you know, Georgetown's great, but look for a school that fits you. Um, different schools have different points of instruction. Some are more theoretical, some are more quantitative. Uh, everyone has their own cup of tea, and just look at can we socially, academically, what's your flavor? Quantitative so, is so important. If, as we've been applying for internships and jobs, there's a constant focus on you need to know how to do data, know how to do data analysis, know how to use all of the different. You need know, you know to use Stata, <coughs> um, things like that. They want you to know how to do that to be able to do your job. So having the quantitative focus here has been so important. Whether you come from a quantitative background or not, <coughs> it's incredibly helpful. So uh, we have a question from. I apologize if I'm slaughtering your name, uh, Chital. So outside of classroom teaching, how else are you learning about public policy while you're at McCourt? Go for it. Yeah, uh, well, if you're interested in politics, you have almost all the cabinet members of the president here, you have presidential candidates, uh, you can be involved in some, if you have uh, education programs, uh, you have different uh, academic programs to well, so you can be involved in one of the student association, you have Latin American Association, East Asian Association, Women and Politics Association, so every subject in your interest in, it's sure McCourt has an option to, to further develop your skills into it. And if for some reason McCourt doesn't have it, now, I might bet it. you can create it. Yeah. Right? We had somebody yeah. create a, a farm and health society organization, and you could join so associations of programs in the MBA school, the She's nursing right. school, if you're so inclined, so on and so forth. Because mm -hmm. we're a collaborative university, it, there, there's infinite options, and you'll never run out of things to do. Um, anyone else? Yeah, I mean, there's just, like I said before, there's just endless things for you to do. Um, and it's really a matter of choosing, not um, facing a dearth of options. Um, and I think what's been neat actually is that, so I freelance for my old company and um, 
it's in the international development sphere, and I read policy papers, and I understand it better. I read through studies and understand what um, what those regressions mean, and I think that's been really cool to kind of pair um, the classroom study with the real life uh, practical application. And even just inside the classroom, it's not so much what you do when you're actually sitting in the room or like the direct homework they give you, but it's how much you actually go and do stuff on your own. Um, I know I just had a project where I actually had to th pick an issue that's prevalent in today's society that's actually solvable and come up with my own solution. Yeah, solution as to how to fix it. <coughs> but not only do you just have to kind of defend what your position is, why you think this is going to fix it, you have to do everything. You have to plan the budget, the implementation schedule, the amount of things you have to do to accomplish actually coming up with a proposal. Um, makes you kind of understand the actual process a heck of a lot more just because even though she didn't explicitly say in the assignment you need to do all of these things when we went out and did it on our own just without being directed you kind of learn a lot more just on your own because of one random thing that got mentioned in class or things like that you actually go and do stuff on your own to understand the stuff that was said in class all right we have a interesting question from Claire um, did you need to buy a new computer slash laptop to support the required stats programs? Um, I'll, I'll take this one because it's pretty familiar. So the main program that we use is Stata. And generally speaking, if you have a functional working laptop, you should be fine. Um, I think it's a good thing for, good tip for all grad students to have a decent functional laptop re regardless of what program you're using. Um, the more intensive one, uh, for those who don't know, among the stats programs, SPSS, that's where I used to be using. That actually really requires a higher end computer if you want to be fast. But since we use Stata, generally speaking, as long as yours is functional enough to browse the internet, you're probably going to be good. And also, like the possibilities you have in Georgetown, you have so many computer sure. labs, you can use 24 hours a day, so <coughs> you're all set to go. Yeah, one of the nice things about the state of recitation that we're in that goes in conjunction with um, your uh, quant one class is the fact that when you're actually in the classroom learning it they have computers already there so if you don't want to bring your laptop like say you use a desktop at home or something um, you can use one there it's not a, mm -hmm. you have to constantly lug it around with you um, they have them there for you to use if you don't want to use your own and I think it wasn't said but it's free so yeah. with this yeah. with your student ID the, the program the, not yeah. the laptop, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> not the laptop. <laughs> wouldn't that be awesome <laughs> So uh, just one quick note about Stata. Um, I, I'll be honest, I coming in was very concerned about it, and it's not something you need to be worried at all. As long as you go to recitation and follow the instructions, you should be fine. I am, I'm not from mathematical ba background, so just in case anyone's concerned about that. All right, um, so let's just talk, give perspective, uh, prospective students ideas about our future. So I'm gonna ask the Ringer about what do all of us hope to do with our degrees? And I'll start with you. Uh, so when I came in, I already knew that I wanted to do environmental policy. I happened to take a couple classes in undergrad that were about environmental economics and global environmental policy. Fell in love with it, um, have a background with it uh, through family. Um, so I already knew that I wanted to do something with environmental policy. And so since I've been here, I've realized that what I want to do is that I want to focus on the intersection between new clean technologies for um, energy and the old like natural gas and to a much lesser extent coal but having that intersection point because going all one or all the other is just not going to happen to put a little politics into this um, since we are a public policy school but so i want to work in the public sector um so. i i in contrast i'm interested in uh, business development and that's what i want to get to you a lot of people do research think tanks, uh, work for government, but a lot of our alumni go into business because there's an intersection between business and policy. There's lots of options for you. Some more traditional in policy land and some a little bit out there, and that's fine. And the possibilities are endless, not to sound like a boring poster or anything. But at this point, um, we're going to wrap up with our final thoughts about our experiences at McCourt. And I'll start with you, Julian. Well, for me, um I strongly believe that politics are <coughs> the most effective agent of, of social change. Uh, I want to work in my country politics. I, may, I maybe try to run for office when I go back. So it's interesting and very useful for me to know about uh, how to, to implement a policy from the beginning to the end. 
to evaluate if those policies are or were effective or not. And it's also very important uh, to know how to manage people, how to manage uh, different resources into the public sector. And those are, those are the skills I'm learning uh, with very good shared experiences, um, very good uh, cases of study. So I think that for me, my degree uh, so far has been very useful for my public uh, uh, objectives when I go back to my country. And I'm very happy to have chosen McCourt for my graduate students. Um, I think it's like Hall said, you should choose the program that's right for you and what you want to do. Um, so I came into this with a pretty clear idea that I want quant skills and I wanted a program that would be able to teach me that in a way that still is um, relevant to uh, real life international development context, which is why I went for the more specific international development policy program. Um, and I think that the school is also fantastic in giving you resources to get you through school. Um, I've been out of school for about uh, seven years before coming here. Um, so one part of my, uh, my hesitancy in going back to school as well is whether or not it was just too late for me um, and whether it would just be too hard to get back into it. And it's definitely a learning curve, um, but I think the school uh, is um, has been really great in, in um, giving support during this process. I think it's incredibly important <coughs> that if you're thinking about getting a degree in policy that you should understand everything that you're actually learning with the fact that it sounds somewhat specific in, oh, public policy politics, but it's actually not. As <coughs> Paul said, it's, there are so many people who go into um, business because the, the skills are so applicable. The amount of things you're learning between statistics and microeconomics and any other thing you choose to study even your electives, you're learning such a wide breadth of things that you can kind of do, I don't want to say anything, but there's a very wide variety of things you can do with this degree. You don't just have to say, I'm going to go into government or I'm going to go into politics. You can go private sector, public sector. You can go do something with Stata. You can go be a statistician if you really want to. So you're not just kind of stuck in one little thing with this degree. So I base off of a um how I evaluate everywhere I go based off the people that I'm around. And the bottom line is that I've met amazing people at Georgetown. Everyone I met has been super interesting. They all have taught me something. And probably most importantly, they're, they're on my Christmas card, a lot of them are. And I'll probably see a few of them at my wedding whenever that happens. And, and that's, I think, what everybody should look for when they go hunting for grad school. Like, you know, the pr brand name, the professors, they're great. But you can't fully leverage them unless you're with great people who will help you get through class, get through those study sessions, uh, help, you know, help you when just get through the doldrums of the weather or whatnot. And I've been very glad of what I've seen in Georgetown and I'm glad I had a great experience so far and I'm sure I'll continue to do so. So, yep. And, Thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for checking in on Facebook Live and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email McCourtAdmissions at georgetown.edu. They're very helpful. Last year I emailed them quite a few times and uh, they, they, they pull through for me. So I'm sure you'll find an equitable experience like that. So uh, once again, thanks. And where do you come to, if you come to Georgetown, that's great. If you don't, come I'm, visit. Sure, I'm sure it'll do, do great. <laughs> feel free to come visit. Some of us sponsor uh, perspectives all the time. We'll be happy to take you to class, answer any questions, take you on tour, so on and so forth. Thank you.